All righty. I think there's still a few people coming through, but we might get started now. So hi, everyone. Welcome again to UCTV Alive for Kids. I'm your host, Tess Crellin. So uh, Lou is off again this month, but we've got a really exciting episode today for you all. Some of you at your school might have signed up for the Premier's Reading Challenge. And what is really exciting today is that we're going to cover this challenge and we're going to have a special guest speaker coming on who is a writer herself and who writes books for kids and for young adults. But first, um, I'll go through a little bit of housekeeping. You might have noticed that your camera has been switched off and your microphone switch been switched off. That's just to protect your privacy. You will be able to communicate with us via the Q&A function at the bottom of the screen. So you can send in some questions. You can send in comments. We love to hear from everyone that is watching, but we can't see you just to keep your privacy. Um, before we start, I'd also like to acknowledge country. So UCTV is all about sharing stories and Tasmanian Aboriginal people were our first storytellers. And as a reflection of our institution's recognition of the deep history and culture of this island, we wish to acknowledge the traditional owners of Tasmania, the original custodians of this land. Um, and we respect their elders past, present and emerging. So I would now love to welcome to the screen our guest today. Her name is Lucy Christopher. She is a children's and young adult author, but she also works at the University of Tasmania. Hi, Lucy, welcome. Hi, Tess, and hi, everybody who's watching. It's so lovely to be here. No, Lucy, thank you so much for coming on the show. It's really exciting. We've pre-filmed a little video of you at home that's going to talk about your books and about reading and why it's lots of fun and how it can make you a kinder person. We might even meet some other people in your home during that video. But before we get started, some people who are watching might have even read some of your books before. Can you give us a quick little introduction of yourself, Lucy? Sure. Well, I just happen to have here <laughs> all of the things that I've read. Uh, not read, I've read them many times, but all of the things that I have written. So these are my books and you'll see that most of them are quite big, chunky books. So these are mostly books for young adults, apart from this one down here, Release, which is a book for adults. And then down here are some illustrated books, some picture books that I have written for ages around four to seven. So I write everything from if you're around four years old until you're about I don't know, a hundred years old. So these, these are they. Wow. That is, that is so impressive, Lucy. You've written so many books. <laughs> Thank you. And some of your listeners might have heard of this one in particular. This has been my most successful book. This is a book called Stolen. It's a book for young adults. And it's about a girl called Gemma who is kidnapped to the great sandy desert in Western Australia. So it's a bit of a psychological thriller. So it's a it's a book for if you're wanting to be on the edge of your seat um, and, and a bit thrilled. <laughs> What age is that one for, Lucy? This one's a young adult book, so it would be for about age 14, 13 plus. Yeah, great. Um, we also would love to hear if anyone that's watching has read any of Lucy's books. So you don't have to necessarily wait till we open up the quest the Q&A chat. Feel free to pop into that Q&A function and just make a comment if you've read one of the books and let us know which one it is. But what we might do now, Lucy, is play this video that we've prepared about the Premier's Reading Challenge and about reading. Are you ready for us to play it? I'm so ready. <laughs> okay, all right. I'm going to do a screen share. So just give me a second. All righty. Hi everyone, my name is Lucy Christopher and I work at the University of Tasmania teaching creative writing, which of course means that I am also a writer and I write books for all sorts of different ages. I write books for adults, I write books for teenagers and I write books for primary school age kids too. I am also really proud to be a reading champion for the Premier's Reading Challenge this year. There are so many reasons why I love 
reading. I first loved reading when I was quite little and I was an only child and my parents used to move house a lot. So my parents moved house about, I think about 20 times by the time I was about 18 years old. And some of those moves were from the UK to Australia and to other different countries as well. So I was spending a lot of time by myself. And so I started to read books because when you're in a book, you never feel like you're by yourself. You're with all these wonderful characters that you've become great friends with and you've become invested in their life. And you also learn about these different characters and learn about these different people and their lives as well. So I was quite a curious child and I think that came about from being a big reader as well. You might have just heard my dog Rocket making a noise, yawning, stretching, having a great time on the carpet over here, wanting to be a superstar, um, interrupting my very important things that I was saying about why I love reading. Um, and I'm also going to add to that why I love reading as he wanders off that I still love reading as an adult and much of it is for the same reason. So when I read, I go into different places in my mind, I learn lots of different things, but there's also something I've learned about reading as my time as, as a researcher at the university. And I've learned that reading helps you to become kinder. And the way it does that is because when you read, you imagine that you're in another person's mind and you imagine their feelings and you imagine how they need to solve their problems. And that creates what we call empathy. So that connection to another person. Rocket's still trying to steal my limelight over here. So there he goes. So my reasons for loving reading as an adult is because I like to be a person that connects with other people. And I just really like the way that read a book, your brain is gonna be strengthened to becoming a kinder person. So, I mean, how cool is that? Why wouldn't you want to read a book and become a kinder person? So nature is really important to me as a writer. And that is because I start with place when I write a story. So have a think, when you start a story, what do you start with? Do you start with a character? Do you start with a story? Do you start with a theme, an idea? Most people seem to start with a character. But I'm a bit weird in that I start with the place itself. And most of my books feature wild places wild nature in them and it becomes an important part of the story. So the Premier's Reading Challenge is just about to begin and it is a really cool exciting thing to do. So remember that the Premier's Reading Challenge is a personal challenge, it's not a competition. The idea is to read as many kinds of different things as you can read but also to really enjoy the kinds of things that you're reading. Spend that time just really being curious and thinking about what kinds of books and stories can I can I read? Would you like to read a book for um, for younger children perhaps? Would you like to read a comic book? Would you like to read a bit of non-fiction? Uh, would you like to read a comic or a graphic novel? It all counts in the, the Premier's Reading Challenge. So remember you can get these books and um, comics and all sorts of wonderful reading excitements from your school library but you can also get them from the public library and anyone can join a public library. There's this really cool thing, a library. You can just turn up, register, make sure you bring your parents or your responsible adult with you. You turn up with them, you register, and then you can borrow hundreds of books and it's so exciting. You can just borrow all sorts of different books. So that's what I encourage you to do. Go and investigate what you could read in either your school library or your public library or both and really enjoy the adventure of finding all sorts of different things to read.
Lucy, it's so exciting re rewatching that video. I had so much fun making it with you last week. Thank you so much. Oh, it's my pleasure. I mean, anytime I get to chat about books with a lovely person like yourself, it's it's a pleasure. Oh, oh Lucy. No, it's great to have you on the show. So we might now um, move to a three minute break to get people to send in some questions. We can't wait to see what people have got to ask. You might want to ask Lucy about how you can read more. You might want to ask her about one of her books. You might want to let us know if you've read one of them already or you've got one borrowed out at the moment from the library. Um, you can ask anything. So Lucy is a reading champion, as she said in the video, for the challenge. We've got a little bit of information that we can give you about the challenge um, if you haven't already joined, but feel free to just send in some questions now. I'm going to close the screen off again to a three-minute video and we'll see you shortly. We've got so many interesting questions that have come through, Lucy. I don't know if you had a little squeeze down the bottom, but I was having a read of them all as they were coming through. They're really interesting. I was just having a little look now. There's so many and it's so exciting. I think we're going to have to do a pretty quick yeah. just bang through all of them. I want to make yeah. sure we, everyone gets their answers. <laughs> For sure. So we've got quite a few different schools. Um, so there's a few questions that have come through from Evandale Primary. Um, and so the teacher's name is Marcella, I think, where she, she's occasionally written the student's name. Um, the first one I'm going to read out was, was just an anonymous, anonymous question, but feel free to write in the chat, Marcella, if you know the student's name that asked it. So the question is, what is your favourite book that you have written? That is a really hard question to answer and also a little bit cruel because I imagine it's like a parent saying well which which of my children do I prefer the best and of course even if that parent might prefer and of course they don't uh, they would never reveal that so it's very difficult to answer which is my favorite book so I am going to say oh, I'm going to say a couple of things one is the book that I first got published, which was Stolen. And that is one of my favorites because it's the book that enabled me to be an author. It's been very successful. It's gone all around the world. It's done lots of things. It may be a TV series as well. Um, so probably that guy, but it's also the book that I last published. And that one is my adult book. And that's a book called Release. So, uh, but really they're all my favorites. Yeah, definitely. And um, Marcella's just sent it through. That question was from Mia. So thank you so much, Mia, for asking that. Uh, we've got a question from, from Dhruv from Harrow Primary School. And they ask, when did you start writing books? Oh, good question, Dhruv. When did I start writing books? Well, I've always been a writer. So I've always, always written since I was quite young. And I used to kind of write little notebooks um, and they would be like little notebooks that I would write to myself. But of course, none of them ever got published because it was just me as like a, a 10 year old writing all the things that happened to me every day might be a bit boring. But when I first started writing books properly, was probably when I was at university and I wrote a, a book there, which didn't get published actually, but it helped me to learn lots of things that I needed to learn in writing a book. That's so cool, Lucy. So even if you get started, even if the first thing you write, you know, doesn't go anywhere, just keep at it. Absolutely, because it's all about practice. If you practice, you get better. So you yeah, have to practice. For sure. Um, we've got a question here from Penny at Howard Primary School. And Penny asks, how old were you when you published your first book? Penny, how old was I? So my first book um, was, again, was stolen. And I think I was 28 years old. Yes, good. Um, and we've got a question here from Bernie Primary from the Year 5 class. They've asked you, what can you tell us what inspires you to write? Oh, good question. Well done, guys. That's a tough one to answer. Lots and lots of things inspire me to write. Um, as I said in the video, nature, being outdoors, really, really inspires me, makes me excited to be a human. And that's always a good thing to, to write about. Um, animals inspire me to write. People finding out new things, because one of the best things about being a writer 
is that you're constantly learning about new things. So you're constantly researching things. And if you're the kind of person that loves to find out things, that's really curious, then being a writer is a really good job for that. That's so interesting. Um, Evan, there's another question that was very similar from Tyrion at Evandale Primary. He, they had also asked you to talk about what inspired you to write your books. So thank you for all those questions about that. Um, we've got an interesting question here from Helen say asking why is nature so important to you Lucy oh good question I think for many reasons I think nature is important because it's the most special most precious thing we have as human beings um so we need to to value it and also it's full of mysteries and I love things that are full of mysteries um it also is so important to me because I, as a young person, again, as I said in the video, I moved a lot and I traveled a lot all around the world. And so I didn't really have a home. And so wherever I arrived, I used to become very, very aware of the place where I'd come to and I'd spend a lot of time in it as a way to feel feel familiar with, with the new place I'd lived. And so I spent a lot of time in nature. I spent a lot of time outdoors. And so nature became almost like a, a place that I could work out who I am and uh, a place where I could feel comfortable as well. Awesome, Lucy. Thanks for sharing that. Cooper, I'm not sure um, what school they're from um, or if they're maybe at a homeschool, but Cooper has asked, how deeply do you have to think about your wording in your books? Oh, Cooper, that's a good question. That is a question that has been asked by someone I think might be a writer. <laughs> <laughs> how deeply do I have to think about my wording? So... Uh, I think a lot about those kinds of questions because writing is a craft and for this craft I don't have a musical instrument or I don't have a paintbrush I just have 26 letters that I can rearrange in however way I want to arrange them with a few extra little things like a space bar and punctuation um, and they are the things I need to play with so I don't have many tools actually so that means that I spend a really long time getting my sentences right. I read them aloud. I make sure the rhythm is right. I print them out and read them on paper as well as on the screen. I give them to people to read. So it's really important that my sentences are crafted like a craftsperson would craft a piece of wood. Wow. Must be so time intensive. And in fact, someone has actually asked a question along those lines. Um, so and the Evan, one of the Evandale classes has asked, how long does it take you to write a book? Oh, it takes me a very, very long time. <laughs> I'm a really slow writer, but I'm also quite a busy writer. So I also work at the university as well with a, a, a different job than being a writer. Um, and I do lots of things. So I am not only slow, but I'm busy. So I would say the quickest one probably took around a year-ish and then the slowest one probably took around four years wow again it just goes to show like don't give up right yeah Stick at something even though it might take a while to finish yeah, especially if you enjoy it as much as you do absolutely we've got a question from an anonymous attendee um it's sort of a three-part question asking what was the first book that you wrote to Lucy and what kind of processes do you go through to write a book? What type of books do you like to read? And are you planning more books, like a part two of Stolen? I think that we wow. might have a Stolen fan here. <laughs> that is that's quite a long question. All right, let's break it down. The first book that I wrote, that's easy to answer, was this one? Yes. Stolen. That's yep. the book I wrote. What kinds of processes do I go through when mm. I write? Oh, wow. Lots of different processes. So the first process is basically me putting lots of ideas on the page. This is my favorite part of the process. This is me where nothing is wrong. Everything's allowed. I can explore however I want to explore. I can write lots and lots of journal entries. I sometimes do some painting. I sometimes, you know, whatever it takes to think about the story. So there's that process. Then there's the process where I start writing and I write a first draft. And that's usually a bit of a mess, to be honest, but it's the story that I tell myself for what the book's about. Then I write another draft where I make the draft a story that I might tell a reader, my audience. Um, so, and then there's, would usually, I 
would always do at least three drafts of a book, sometimes more. Fly Away took 10 drafts, so sometimes they take a long time. And then they go to a publisher, and the publisher has three different kinds of editing. So they edit for the whole book, they edit for um, little sentences and little little tiny things, and then they edit for, for um, inconsistencies in the novel as well. So there are loads of processes in writing a book. This is why it takes such a long time to, to write and then publish a book. Um, and then the planning of more books. Yes. So there is a part two of Stolen, sort of. There's a companion book for Stolen, and that is actually my adult book. So it's an adult book. It's for a different audience, but um, it's, a, it's kind of in the same world. Um, and I am planning, at the moment, I'm writing another adult book and I am writing another young adult book. And I've also want to, um, I've written some picture books that I would like to get published too. <laughs> Amazing. Do I answer it all? <laughs> yes, there was another question in there, but it feeds into a question um, that someone else asked. So I'm just going to find that. That was again from Evanel Primary, similar question to what was just asked. What is your favorite children's book? Oh, Evandale, you've got, got some good questions. My favourite children's book. Oh, there are so many. Um, I really love, I'm going to tell you my favourite picture book, maybe my favourite middle grade as well, but my favourite picture book is a book called Owl Babies by Martin Waddell. And it is very simple. And it's about three baby owls, owlets in a nest, and her, their mum goes out to well they don't know where she goes out she goes out to fly away one night and they're all stuck together in the nest and they're wondering when mum will come home if mum will come home and if they should be worried about it and of course mum does come home and she brings them a tasty treat but of course they knew it all along they weren't scared they knew that mum was coming back so that's my favorite picture book for the little ones. And the reason I love it is because it is, it's got a good story and it is just so gorgeous and comforting and it makes me want to tuck up cozy in my nest. So I hope that that would make all the little baby owls out there tuck up cozy in their nest as well. Yeah, so that sounds like such a nice book. I haven't heard of it before. <laughs> um, we've got another question here from Evandale from Charlotte and Charlotte has asked why do readers enjoy Stolen? Oh good question uh, that's probably a question for the readers. <laughs> I would hope that it is because um, it's quite uh, it's quite a, a, a gripping kind of story it's quite a gripping plot line. It's also written uh, what we would call in the second person but it's in a sense it's written from Gemma to Ty, who is the man that took her away. So it's written in quite an engrossing way. Um, so I hope that might be part of the reason. Um, and it's also got a very strong sense of place and nature, and that is the desert in Western Australia. That's awesome. Thank you so much, Lucy. Um, Evandale just sent through a, a note to say that the question that we had before, I think, which was about what is your favourite children's book when you were talking about the Owlet book? That was from, um, oh, my my channel is full of things. <laughs> that was from Mia, I think. If I've gotten that wrong and it was actually from someone else, feel free to send it through again. <laughs> um, all right, we've only got a couple of minutes left and we did want to show a video that the Premier has also put together as a bit of a message for everyone to talk a bit more about the Premier's Reading Challenge. Let me just do one quick more read through this through this very long list of questions and see if there's a very last one we can read out. Um, oh, there's so many great questions. Oh, there's lots here. But I think that we can we might want to try to answer one from a school we haven't heard from. Oh, there's so many. Um, how about we go with this question here? Liam from Howrah How Primary School asks, do you like writing about dark or light topics? Oh, good question, Liam. Uh, I like, hmm, I would like to say I like writing about both. And I think 
um, good writers write about light and dark often within the same book and often even in the same sentence sometimes if they're very skillful. Um, but I would say my readers probably think I write more dark books. Um, and that is probably because I don't think I'm very funny. So I'm really terrified that if I try to write a light book and I try to be funny, no one will laugh and that will be awful and I'll be terribly embarrassed. But one day I really would like to write a light book. I would love to write a nice, a nice romance novel, but they always seem to go dark. <laughs> <laughs> oh, thank you for answering that last question, Lucy. Um, we now we've got one minute left. So I'm just going to very quickly give a shout out to the Premier's Reading Challenge. So if you if your school has already signed up, that's great. If your school hasn't, but you're personally interested in taking part, you have until this Friday. The 9th of June, I think that is. Yep, Friday the 9th of June to sign up personally for yourself. And that's no problem. You can take part even if your school isn't. Um, and then the actual challenge runs for 10 weeks and it kicks off at the end of this month on the 26th of June and it goes through till the 1st of September. So it's a great opportunity to read as many books as you can. It's not a competition. It's just a, a personal challenge. And we're going to say a big thank you now to Lucy for joining us. Thank you so much, Lucy. And oh, pleasure. <laughs> no worries. And we'll go ahead and play this video for everyone. I'm going to try and answer some of these while the video is playing. Oh, even better. Thank you, Lucy. <laughs> um, so some people, if you have a little look in the chat, you'll be out in the Q&A, you'll be able to see a written answer from Lucy. But I'm going to play this video message now from the Premier. Thanks, everyone, for joining us. Bye. Hello everyone, I'm very excited to let you know that registrations are now open for the 2023 Tasmanian Premier's Reading Challenge. The challenge is in its 15th year and this year I want to have more Tasmanian children and young people participating in the challenge than ever before. This year we have expanded the challenge. It is now open for our young readers in prep all the way up to older readers in year 10. The challenge will commence on the 26th of June and finish on the 1st of September. That's 10 weeks uh, to read as many books as you can. I encourage you to read what interests and excites you. It could be fiction, non-fiction, comics, poetry, plays, magazines, newspapers. It doesn't matter. It all counts in the challenge. My own personal reading challenge will be finishing Cold Coast by Robin Mundy, uh, which won People's Choice Award at the Tasmanian Literacy Awards 2022. So keep an eye out for information from your school or jump on to www.decyp.tas.gov.au for more details on registration options along with other useful information. So challenge yourself, uh, join the fun and get reading. Thank you.